Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Ramananda Roy, they had a wonderful conversation uh, in Godavari. And in the, at the beginning of that conversation, Ramananda Roy explained some very important principles how we can lead up to pure bhakti. And I, want to, I just want to very briefly discuss that conversation that they had. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had taken sannyas and then he went to Puri. In Jagannath Puri, he met with Sarabhang Bhattacharya, who was a big impersonalist, Mayavadi. And we discuss what, about impersonalism and Mayavadi philosophy. So, but Sarabhang Bhattacharya, who thought that actually we, the Jeev is Brahma, but in the illusion we're thinking we're separate. So Mahaprabhu completely defeated him, totally defeated him. And he became a very, very ardent devotee of Mahaprabhu, loving devotee of Mahaprabhu. And he said, now I understand. You know, I associated with Ramananda Roy. I thought he was just a, a sentimentalist, because he's always talking about Krishna and the gopis. And now I understand. He's a very, very elevated devotee. You must meet him. You must meet him. Go to Godavari and you'll meet him there. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is very eager. So he made his way to Godavari, and there he met with Ramananda Roy. Rai Ramananda, he was the governor there in the service of King Pratap Rudra. And in the place of his birth, it's not far from Alalanath, which isn't very far from Jagannath Puri. You see his sword, it's like this huge, really heavy. He was a great statesman. <coughs> so he discussed with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in a secret place. Oh, he's very, very elevated devotee. In Krishna Leela, Ramananda Roy is Vishaka Devi, very dear friend of Srimadhi Radharani. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked him, what is the supreme perfection? And Ramananda Roy, first of all, he said, oh, perf supreme perfection, that's the performance duty in Varnashram Dharma. Varnashram Dharma means that there are s uh, duties according to one's social position. Somebody is a uh, Brahmana teacher, someone's a statesman, leader, Kshatriya. Someone's a business person, agriculturist, Vaisha, and someone's a worker. So for each of these groups, there are set duties. And everyone should perform their duties uh, without attachment. This is, this is the, the principle of Varnashram. Uh, that's, those are the Varnas. And then there's so, uh, spiritual stages as well. Brahmacharya, Vahasta, uh, retired, and then sannyasi as well. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, although this is, this is described in the Shastra, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, no, this is external. Why is it external? Sometimes we perform duties in Krishna consciousness because, you know, we know that's what it means to be a devotee. We put on the neck beads and we're chanting on the beads. We chant our rounds, 16 rounds. And then we go to the, the temple and we hear the lecture and then we take the prasad. It's all like routine duties. Like it's a sect. And you know that if you just do these things, even without thinking anything, oh, you go back to Godhead. No thought about the principles, anything. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, no, this is external. You have to go on. So Ramananda Roy said, oh, then you should offer your duties to Krishna. Okay, you, you act, but not only just doing it without attachment, but you should offer to Krishna. There's some relationship with Krishna. Krishna karma out them. <clears throat> whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you offer, whatever you give away, you do it as an offering to me. Krishna is saying in Bhagavad Gita. So he's saying it in Bhagavad Gita, so it must be true. One would think. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, no, this is external. Why? Because Krishna Karmapana, offering our duties to Krishna, offering our work to Krishna, means I think that I'm doing the work. But actually, I'm not the doer. So straight away, it's still a material conception. And then the question arises, why am I doing these things? Am I doing it because it's pleasing to me, or am I doing it because it's pleasing to Krishna? Somebody, for example, he may be a rock musician. So he thinks, okay, I'll play rock music for Krishna. He has a rock concert, and at the end, he gives all the profit to Gurudev. Very nice. Donation. Help to build an Avadip temple. It is this pure bhakti. 
question is, why is he playing rock? Is it because Krishna likes to hear his rock music, or because he likes to play the rock music? If it's because he likes to play it, then it's not yet pure bhakti. He's offering the results, and that's good. He knows Krishna's there. There's a relationship with Krishna, but it's not yet pure bhakti. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, El Bhagya, this is external. Oh. Okay. You don't like working for Krishna. Okay, then giving up all engagements. Sarva Dharma Bhritti Jamami Kangsharam Bhritti Hamtang Sarva Pape Bhyo Mokshi Shami Mahasucha Last instruction in Bhagavad Gita so it's got to be correct, right? Eho Bhagya Chitani Mahaprabhu says this is external because in this verse although Krishna is saying Sarva Dharma Bhritti he's saying you give up all your worldly duties but he's not saying what is the alternative he's not yet describing pure bhakti Actually, that he described in the previous verse. Manmana bhava man bhakta madhyaji man namaskara. Absorb your mind completely in me. Become my devotee. Uh, worship me. Offer obeisances to me. This is actually pure bhakti. Mame vaishyasi sachanti pratyani priyosime. Then you'll achieve me because you're my friend. So this is pure bhakti with ras, with actual mellows relationship, transcendental relationship. But this verse, Sarvadama Parichaja, you give up all engagements, give up all religion, give up all other engagements. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wasn't satisfied. Just giving up is not enough. So sometimes devotees think, oh, I'm engaged in material. We have to give up everything material. So when they're chanting, for example, like in the first mentality, just chanting because you're supposed to chant, you have to chant 16 rounds, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. 16, right. Or, then, offering to Krishna, you think, oh, okay, Krishna will be happy if I chant my 16 rounds. But still, so I have to do it. But still, not with a mood of, of love offering to Krishna. Then, okay, I'm going to chant, I'm not going to think about anything material at all. But still, where's the positive? I did that for years. Someone said, you should, Prabhupada said, you should just chant and hear the sound of the Holy Name, that's all. So I said, thank you, sir counting how many rounds or how many mantras I could chant without thinking of anything material. But nothing about Krishna. It was just Krishna's name, Krishna's name. Mahaprabhu said, no, this is material. He said, oh, this is external. He said, this is external. Even just giving everything up and surrendering to Krishna, this is external. So then, Rai Ramananda said, okay, Brahmabhuta Prasanna, Okay, you're not satisfied with this, giving up material things. Then, we should understand what is bhakti. We should understand that Krishna is the Supreme Lord. We should understand our position. In other words, philosophically, we should understand and become detached from material things. So, Brahma Bhuta Prasannatma. We become very satisfied when we become completely free from all, men, all material designations. Samasarveshu Bhuteshu. Become equal to everybody. And... And then we'll achieve real bhakti. So he's talking about bhakti. And he's talking about free from being free from material things. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wasn't satisfied. This is external. Why? Because it's mixed. Mixed with knowledge, speculated knowledge. We can't understand how to please Krishna. Theoretically, we can understand that we should please Krishna especially when we hear from the pure devotee, but we shouldn't just hear from the pure devotee that we should serve Krishna. We go away and say, okay, I'll make up my own mind. How I'll, I, know how, I know how Krishna will be pleased. We don't know how Krishna will be pleased. We don't know how to please Krishna. Like if somebody wants to make... A, he invites, invites you to dinner, right? And they have their own idea. Maybe you don't like spicy food. And they do something really, like, really fierce Mexican, I don't know, what, chili con carne. <laughs> and you're fried. Can't even eat it. Or, you do like spicy food, and they make you a nice salad with avocado, no salt, no pepper, no lemon, nothing. Just pure nature's taste. You're fried. Because it's not tasty. So you have to know, we have to know how to please the other person. We have to know how to please Krishna. How are we going to do that? We have to hear from the spiritual master. 
So Mahaprabhu said, hey, hold back here. I don't accept this. You can't understand how to do bhakti philosophically. You have to hear. So then, Ramananda Roy, he said, Oh, jnane uh, prayasama the pasnanamateva. So then, once you give up this understanding, philosophical understanding, aham brahmasmi, I am Brahman, I, I have to become detached from matter, give up, all, give up this dependence on philosophy and what? Hear from the pure devotee. You don't have to change your position. You don't have to renounce family, renounce your work. Uh, right at the beginning of the Krishna consciousness movement in the West, Sri Prabhupada came to the West, and one, uh, one young man, he, he was working in an office, government office, but he saw that Prabhupada is living in an ashram with other, other people, they'd given up all their other activities and they come and live in the ashram. So he gave up his job and he came and stayed in the ashram. And he met Prabhupada and he said, Swamiji, I've given up my job to come and stay with you. And Prabhupada said, you have a job? Yes, Swamiji, but I've given up. He said, no, 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 you go straight back. You do your work and you bring me the money. Because they were struggling so much. There was Satsuruta, and then he became Satsuruta Maharaj after that. So, uh, we have to hear, we don't have to, we don't have to change our position. Don't have to change the position. But we should hear from the pure devotee. Pure devotee will give information. You're not this body, your spirit, soul, your servant of Krishna. But more than information, he'll guide us how we can practice. And more than that, he'll, when he's pleased, he'll give us the moods of service that we're actually after. Then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu we said, yes, okay. This is okay. But you can go further. So this is the beginning of the process, but it's not yet the full process. The fact that somebody is hearing from the pure devotee doesn't mean to say that he's become pure, uh, perfect in devotional service. So then Ramananda Roy went on to describe, first of all, um, practicing Vaidhi Bhakti, and then practicing spontaneous Bhakti, spontaneous devotional service. And then he began to describe the moods of uh, serving, serving Krishna as a servant to Krishna and friend to Krishna like this. And finally coming up to Madhuri Ras. Well, that's another topic. But these, these beginning stages, we should understand that just practicing like mechanically is not enough. Just doing what we want to do and offering to Krishna also is not enough. Like, I like working on the computer. But just working on the computer and never thinking about Krishna is not enough. I have to do it to try to please Krishna. Just giving up all material things is also not enough. And speculating that how I can do bhakti, what it means, what is bhakti, what is devotional service, what is my position, what should I be doing, this is also not enough. We have to hear from the pure devotee. This is the beginning of the process. Stane stita. We don't have to change our position, but we hear from the pure devotee. And this is really the beginning of pure devotional service. Hare Krishna.